Wow, it's so sure. it's it's recording, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Nice to meet you, and uh, nice to see you again. Um, yes. Where 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 are you now? We we cannot see your background because you have a lovely uh, Miro background that we just we're talking about. But uh, yes, I. Mm -hmm. I am in Boulder, Colorado. Um, Colorado is a great place. We have blue sky and mountains. Great. And this is morning for me. <laughs> yes, and, and evening here. So this is the first transatlantic uh, thing we're doing in this transdisciplinary course. <laughs> so that's really great. And then um, can, you, can you maybe by way of uh, starting this uh, conversation, uh, say a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you work and what you work on? So my name is Ellen Du. Like, how do you do? <laughs> because I like to do things. Um, so I am a professor in the Atlas Institute at the University of Colorado Boulder in the United States. Uh, I run a lab called the ACME Lab, A-C-M-E, ACME for Creative Machine Environment, because <clears throat> We believe people are creative machines. We also like machines to be creative. So we are working in the intersection of people, design, and technology together. Um, so some of the early work that I did was a uh, sketch recognition, um, electronic cocktail napkin. You want the computer to understand what you draw, so give you right to it at the right time. And from 2D sketching, I moved to 3D sketching. Um, that's because, for example, if architect draw the footprint, they actually want to see in, in 3D. Or if they draw the isometric view, you actually want to go to CAD. So I did the sketch to virtual environment and so put them into 3D. And then as you walk through, you realize things may not be in the right place. You want to move the door, you want to cut the wall. And so we are doing annotation and monitoring, I mean, manipulate the object in the 3D environment. And then from 2D to 3D and 3D to, I would say, 4D or object sketching. Um, basically, when I was teaching at the University of Washington, um, my student was putting all kind of crazy multimedia music, video stuff on a virtual environment. And when he tried to show me, say, Ellen, look at this, look at that. And then I said, this is too hard because he's using his mouse click, click, click and trying to go behind. I said, why don't you take the object out <laughs> so yes. we can see and feel it. Out the screen. So that, <clears throat> yeah. So that was the first project that uh, in the tangible of physical computing. And that was called the navigational block. So we have a block of who, what, when, where. And we are working for the tourist spot. So you can like who, the founding father, the miner, the woman, when, 19, um, 18, 1890, 1911, <clears throat> yeah, and what? That could be um, the gold rush or the, the big fire or where, what, where did it happen? And so people can be manipulate the physical object and then, re yeah, um, retrieve the different stories for the tourist spot. And so everybody who can walk up and use, so that was pretty fun. And cool. I've been, yeah, so I think what I'm doing today is about tangible interactions and how people work together and how object could be part of the sketching as you scaffolding and experimenting what kind of experience you may have. Yeah, so that, and of course, that's also why I, I know you because I'm also uh, very much interested in tangible interaction and we met at the, the conference of tangible interaction, right? And so we should really go, go into that more because I think that in, in facilitating creativity in groups, uh, the tangible objects can also be really important, right? But um, maybe maybe one step back, can you say a little bit more about the, the Atlas Center that you work now? Because I think it's quite new, right? And, and in a way quite uh, innovative in, in how it is set up and, and what it aims for. Um, mm -hmm. So Atlas as an institute um, is not that new. But okay. it, it was, uh, it existed more like um, here is the idea that people can come together. And then when Mark Gross became a director, I think six years ago, and he made that into a research institute. So wow. staff, zero faculty. Now we have nine tenor track faculty and nine 
uh, instructors. So we have like 20 faculty like growing within the four or five years. And that's why people think it's new because we also have a full stack uh, program. We have undergraduate degree program, master degree and PhD degree in the degree name called Creative Technology and Design. So it's a CTD. And cool. it, it is interdisciplinary. So each one of the tenure faculty like me, we are housed in the Atlas Institute, but we all have a tenure home in a different place. So for example, yeah. people could have a tenure home in computer science, in information school, in mechanical engineering, and in art in different places. Yeah. So yeah, so that's, that's what I understood that it's really uh, also really interdisciplinary and um, and and but that you really physically come together well maybe not at the moment so much with the crisis but um, that that's another topic but uh, yeah. I think yeah apparently you think it's really important like well all of you think it's important to really come together uh, yes. from different disciplines and can you get can you give examples D did you experience how that works just in practice if you literally sit around the table with all these different disciplines and backgrounds oh uh, it's a lot of sometimes fun sometimes it goes wrong right or uh, it, it can <laughs> clash or uh... yeah 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 so it's a lot of fun because we're all in the same building and so we will run into each other like in the kitchen in the bathroom in different places and so we have like impromptu chat and so students yeah. can so student and faculty kind of, the faculty kind of like an atom and student like the, the ions, right? And so any new molecule, it's like two faculty and the student like dance around them and we start talking and then maybe ah. there's another one. So there's a multiple thing. So for example, like one of my neighbor is doing, uh, Carson is doing nanotechnology and oh, he's wow. talking about tattoo can give you superpower. So it's not just ink and what if the ink is a sensor that understand maybe your insulin level or something else, right? And then another neighbor I have is um, Dan. He's doing human robot interactions. And so he's doing how people interact with robot. And as a result, like I'm actually working with him and also Laura across the hallway is doing smart textile. Okay. So I have students and I have multiple author paper and project with different people. So for example, right now we have a project called AR Drum Circle augmented reality drumming, right? And so one of the things that we are remote, um, then if I want to play with you, I want to see you, I want to hear you, and I want to see your hand. But yes. there is network latency. <laughs> and so normally if we do Zoom or do any of the video conferencing, they will be in delayed. And so yeah. we are working together, trying to think about what are the communication protocol, what are the human communication uh, cue, and maybe we can also do um, understanding the pattern or predictive modeling. So it, it's not finished yet, but we are bringing different disciplines together. And for for a simple problem, we say, oh, how can we make it more enjoyable? And so we That's think about video feedback or and sound. But when, already from this example, before you know it, you you want to go even broader and break, get disciplines from psychology, philosophy, economics, do they come in as well? Or uh, is it really all technology related at the moment? Well, I think different people have different focus. Well, for example, yes, we do have people who are more interested in the cognitive science part or the psychology part or the feminist uh, or critical theory. And so I think okay. different people bring different part when they are working on a project together. So that's really fun. And I think when you, when you say, is there any issues? Yes, sometimes we would use the same word, but we mean, it, mean different things. And so we have to say, what yeah. do you mean by that? So we keep on asking questions and then we show our explanation and sometimes we just laugh, say, oh, that was totally different than what I thought <laughs> you were talking about. And, but that also yes. bring up new ideas when we talk about things, yeah. Did, did you ever, uh, are, did, are there ever, oh, my internet connection is unstable, it says. I hope it works. Um, was there ever uh, projects that were deliberately focused on, for example, this common language? And, and I could already start to think about how to design systems that would, so I don't know, a big wall with a mind map and every day you can add a little meaning to a word so that the, the shared meaning grows or stuff like that. Or uh, did, did people work on that or would that be an interesting idea to maybe do? I think that's interesting. I think 
the different combination, like I said, the different atoms and different ions. And so the combination of that will create a different group dynamic. And so for example, let's say, so Daniel Leitinger is working on transformable object. Okay, so he has this PhD student who's interested in things that are transforming. And then my student is interested in object that we can, is tangible interaction. And so when you come together, then that come up with the little tiny robot that can reconfigure themselves doing things. And so yes. that happened because we were, we are near each other. We talk to each other and say, what do you think? What's going on? So we learn from each other the different mode operation or different representation. So sometimes model, sometimes it's diagram, like you said, post, post it note or yeah. my map, and sometimes it's physical thing. Let's build this prototype and see how it works. Yeah. And 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 what I hear you say or what it should suggest is that everybody really needs to be open, uh, have a sort of open, a curious mindset, right? You need to be interested in learning from others and learn and getting connected right because I, I i could imagine some organizations uh like governmental organizations or at least some organization in the netherlands where people that work there don't necessarily immediately have that mindset or they have lost it or they are afraid or fixed in procedures or so that they they no longer talk about new ideas at the coffee machine right but i i i think in atlas everybody is also willing and they, they are motivated to, to, to make new connections, right? Is that true? Yes, yes. And I, I think we found that interesting and fun. And I think we're always looking for something that interests different people. And we, I don't think we ever really have any fight. I think most no. of the time it's just like debate or arguments. What do you think? And so sometimes we agree to disagree. But then I think it's also interesting. Uh, for example, for me, Sometimes if people are in heated debate and I'm trying to analyze what are they doing. And then yeah. I realize sometimes is some people want to get it done. Some people yeah. want to get it right. Some people ah. want to get appreciated. Some people yeah. want to get along. And so when people are in a different venue, ah. that's when they're fighting because like, I, well, let's get this moving because there's a deadline. Other person was saying, well, well this needs to be right. Let's go back to drawing both figure out. So they yeah. are in total opposite, but both have good intention because one is yes. like, let's get it done and one person want to get it right, right? And sometimes some people just want to get along. So they say, yes, yes, yes. They didn't say any opinion, but some people want to be appreciated. They just say, hey, let's do that. And nobody said, great. And they just keep on like, yeah, you have to follow me. <laughs> They want recognition. All right. yes. <laughs> yeah. So I found that framework was really interesting because I think it's actually less on the projects. So one time I was in a faculty meeting and the people were arguing. I think we we're talking about student I think, and then just like talking for a long time. And then I started looking at that. I said, oh, they are in different quadrant. And so I started telling them, I appreciate this. This is a great idea. We should think about what to do, but then we all have to do this deadline, we need to get it right, but we also get it, get it done. And can we just figure it out? And then everybody agrees, so we move on. <laughs> yeah, then so, you have a win-win situation because all yeah. these all these um, mindsets are important, right? In the end, to get a good yeah. job. That's cool. So maybe we can talk a little bit about the tangibility more specifically, because um, we sometimes may have the idea that in order to get uh, thoughts together and in order to understand one another and do stuff, uh, we need to talk. And uh, I have uh, ideas in my mind and you have ideas in your mind. And uh, the, the goal is to, to just exchange them. <laughs> uh, so if I say the right things and you say the right things, we understand each other and then it's finished, right? But I think the, um, what, what I really learned from the tangible interaction community that you are uh, one of the main people in, of course, um, is that there's a thing in the middle, right? So it could be the prototype or something else. Uh, and that actually helps this sort of shared in the understanding or, or communication between people, right? Uh, could you, could yeah. you say a little bit about that, how you see that? Yeah, so I think a couple of different things. One of the things is that even like right now, right? So we, we see things, we hear things, then we forget. But if we make something, we remember because we, the process of making that, our body, our tangible interaction, we understand how we make that. We, we actually find out more issues or understanding. And so for example, like Richard Feynman actually said, the things that he cannot make, he would not understand because you see huh. things, 
you you remember that and then but if you think you can also forget but if you have to do the proof or you to do the formula when you write it out so i think yeah. a lot of thing about design is about making the external representation and so that's why people do sketching but i think tangibility is also on top of that more than just sketching on a paper about idea but building something that you realize quickly like something works something didn't work because it may all looks good or seems fine in your brain and when you put it out say wait it doesn't work or yeah. or it doesn't feel right when you hold it and then also other people can see the representation as well at the same time and say oh i thought you were talking about that so now you just build that so how about this so then this is the object to think with i think that's a key idea the yeah. tangible object is the object to think with it's not a final product it's something no. that help you to understand and so you can do the design process by incrementally changing it and modifying and play with it and see how they work could you do that also with um uh, in completely different contexts. So suppose uh, you have a, a bunch of, uh, well, you have a, a, a crisis team trying to solve the the COVID crisis. Would it would it help them to to make things tangible? Because I mean, they're not literally working on a tangible thing, right? They they have to design policy and decisions, and so it's not it's the, what they design is in 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 a way not tangible. But yet in their discussions, they may use something tangible to, to create shared understanding. Yes. Yeah, because as you say things, you may not remember. So what if you write the idea down, put them as positive known, or you draw the diagram, or do my map, or whiteboard, right? So those are tangible things too, because then you have the object you can talk about, you can move them, you can group them, and you can say, okay, I like this, I like this, but then can there be another solution? So just yeah. having saying things in the air, they disappear. <laughs> yeah, you can, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, you're already doing it mentally or like you're already gesturing. So the whole idea of you can point at something and yeah. and both look at the same thing, that helps, right? To, uh... That totally helps. So for example, let's say if we are in a citizen participation workshop, right? Yeah. And people present, project one, project two, project three. And quickly when the participant want to refer to project one and two, they probably give it a nickname. Maybe the project one is, is this one and the project two is this one and project yeah. three is that. So as they're talking about, they will be able to refer to this represent maybe the configuration, this represent something else. And so even gesture is making something tangible because you need the space holder or yeah. memory aid. Yeah. So, so here's another interesting story. So people know about Mark Twain, right? Mark Twain is the author, right? And he was also a great speaker. And so usually he may not be a first speaker. He will listen to other people's talk and then he was trying to rearrange his idea. Huh. So he will write things down in the index card, but then when you move it up and he will reshuffle them, but then sometimes he's so nervous to drop them. And so he realized maybe he should write it on his finger. So like point one, two, three, four. So oh, then yeah. Yeah, in the he was looking at them, right? And so he's mentoring, he needs the slides, the idea, so he can shuffle them, whether it's a physical or whether it's on their fingertips. So he remember like, so this is just three, four things I want to talk about. So I'll write the first one. And yes. then because of the speaker say something else, other people say something else, I'm going to reverse the order. So you can manipulate that. It was a cute story. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and now, and you also say that you're working on or thinking about in the center also about the creativity of machines. Now, yes. some people may think uh, that that doesn't exist. You know, machines are not creative because they are machines. Uh, <laughs> but you probably disagree with that or uh, or do you? Or, or do you say, well, it's a different kind of creativity than what we usually well, so advocate? I yeah, so I yeah, so I'm very interested in making machine creative, but what I mean is making technology as a creativity support tool, right? As so a tool for I, people. Yeah. As a tool. Yes. Right. So for example, we look in my background is a mirror, right? So we can figure out what the style and then we can program a computer they can draw more like mirror. And so this is not something I made up, right? So Harold Cohen's Aaron was yes. drawing on his style. So even Harold passed away, the machine can continue, the algorithm can always generate new art. Okay, that's interesting. And then the other thing could be, so for me, the right tool at the right time, 
as part of my PhD dissertation is when I sketch something and the computer recognizes, hey, this looks like a snail or this looks like a galaxy and retreat a picture for me. And then I suddenly say, oh, I haven't thought about that, but that was interesting. So that gave me inspiration to move some, some, some other places. Okay, so for example, right now we're working with, so I said AR drum circle, the other one was also music, but it's called jump station. And so the idea is that there are different things you can jump together. But then the computer could be like listening and seeing out. Oh, are you in harmony? Are you in sync? And so different LED lights could come up. And so you can kind of encourage people to, to jump in the right beat or do other things. And so maybe it's a celebration of how maybe human machine symbiosis that you can help each other be more creative and enjoy things together. Um, or everyday object could be part of the things that make you happy <laughs> that you interact and they may not be a full bone machine, but I, I think anything that's interactive, it could be part of the machine. Right. Yes, so. exactly. But I, I really like, like, so the way you, you pose it, these are very uh, sort of fresh and creative and, and, and fun things. Right. And, and I think we're gradually moving in that direction while maybe in, in the 1980s and nineties, when computers were really growing in presence in our lives, uh, they were not associated with creativity uh, directly, right? They, uh, I mean, some people were, of course, working on that, but the, the general public would think that the computer is actually uh, very uh, strict and because it follows rules and it's, uh, so it will never, never think outside of its own box, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and I mean, there have been at the, at the I don't know, you, you also taught at the um, uh, industrial design department, right? In, uh, in uh, uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, in our department, there was a lot of discussion in the beginning that computers may, may act, I mean, we did see that students no longer sketched. They were no longer working with physical materials because they were directly trying to draw in cuts, programs and so on. And that, in a way, inhibited their freedom to think, right? So, so there were things going wrong in a way. So, what what for you is the sort of the key of doing it the right way to use the to use computers not as something that limits, but as something that opens up in a way. Uh, is is there some kind of key magic ingredient that we need to put in? <laughs> well, so I think um, so. Yeah, I think there are several things. So for example, when I try to do my courses and I will introduce different tools, right? So computer is one tool, sketching is one tool, modeling clay is one tool, yes. or dance performance is another tool, or brainstorming is another tool, right? So in a way I would say, hey, what I want you to see is that this is a buffet with all the different dishes, right? You need yes. to know where are they, you don't have to eat all of them or, or stuff yourself, but some people may, may prefer or more comfortable doing this or the other thing, but don't lose sight of other things as well. And also don't be enslaved by the tool, but, yes. but come up from your idea first and then find the right tool at the right time. Which one is appropriate for this, right? So if I want to do curve, maybe I should not use a ruler, right? So if I want to figure out how the things follow me in, in a dance movement embodiment, maybe I should have motion tracking instead of doing cat, right? Maybe yeah. I should I should do a sensor of the air for or do a simulation of something else. So I think depends on like just in time learning or just in time using the tool, right? To the right time. <laughs> so don't just yeah. like, here's one tool, here's my hammer, so I'm gonna ham everything. Like yeah. all right. So sometimes you need to use a screwdriver, sometimes you use a hammer. So I yeah. think one of the issues is that when people learn CAD, they say, okay, CAD can do everything. And so they just ignore the other part. And I, I try to encourage like multimodal, multi tools is like the your yeah. life is interesting. You don't eat the same thing every day. I hope not. No. But <laughs> I think you, you're no. interested in trying different food, right? And I think same thing with design. Like, if you already know how to do certain, certain things, maybe you should say, oh, let's try to use another tool and see what I can do. Yeah, so the, the computer is not a replacement of the other stuff. It's, it's just another dish in, in the buffet. I, I like that metaphor. <laughs> That's very <Yes>. nice. <laughs> 
Great. Well, I I think um, uh, this would be a good moment to uh, to round off the the this official part of the interview. Uh, I think we talked about uh, many things, and and uh, you gave us a a wonderful and very inspiring insight. A little, and you also mentioned a lot of projects. So maybe uh, students should look that up. Uh, and, and try to find some more information if they are interested in that kind of stuff because uh, you mentioned yes. a lot of different uh, projects and topics that so people can uh, sort of uh, be inspired by that. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, so that concludes the official part, but I don't know if you, uh, if, if you want to uh, uh, join me in uh, bonus material. <laughs> <laughs> which would start now. Were, th were there other things that you were thinking about or uh, stuff that you thought, oh, this is also important or we should, we should not forget about this? Uh, I think, okay, for bonus, I would think that, okay, this is a strange time. I think we are all, all under a lot of stress and we are isolated. Um, but I think remember to celebrate like how incredible you are as a human being that you were born to the world, that how unique each one of you are, having ability to do different things. And I think quite often we will come up with the idea and then we shut ourselves down, say, oh, that's not good enough, somebody's done it. But don't shut it down, just say, okay, let's say I like, what if, uh, I wish, and then just put the idea out there before you shut it down. And so, like, what if we could do a little bit of things different? So people say, oh, that's been done. Say, what if we change another ingredient so that's not the same? Um, I think everybody have their unique contribution and so don't shut it down. I mean, I say that because sometimes I would do that. I have self-doubt and I think people talking about imposter syndrome say, do I actually know this? But then, mm -hmm. yes, there's a reason why you're here in the world. There's a reason why you can make contribution because you, every person is unique, even twins they think differently so i think that's the beauty of doing collaboration into this spring work as well yeah that's very important that you uh, emphasize that thank, thank you for that and 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 also um it reminds me also that sometimes in the university we may be very focused on uh how much does anybody know how much theory do you have do you have can you prove everything you say and and that can kill creativity, right? You Sometimes you just want to be free and, and not be bounded by having to give arguments for everything all the time. Just first uh, brainstorm and, and let, let the mind go free. And we should maybe treasure that a little bit more in the, also in the university, right? So not, uh, yes, and I know sometimes critique will be hard, but remember critique is not about you. Critique is about whatever that artifact. So if you can detach that, say, okay, Let's listen to the critique. Okay, that makes sense. So how, what else, what can we do? So don't take yeah. it personally because some, some of the critique could be very mean. <laughs> <laughs> or or some, yeah, some of the people will say, that's totally uh, no use or whatever, or they destroy yeah. your model and don't be hurt by that. And I mean, the fact that people are engaged, that means they are interested in your idea. They want it to be better. So even though it's harsh, then you can yeah. take that as a constructive suggestion. <laughs> that's a good point that's a good point well um thank you very much uh, ellen and uh, i hope you're all uh, uh are and will remain uh, safe and healthy and uh, and still get the chance to collaborate and work together even if in these uh, difficult times yes uh, we're also learning new ways of interacting uh, or or maybe rediscovering stuff that we that we already <laughs> had but now using uh, a lot uh, so that's it will bring good stuff as well, I think. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not easy times. Eh? But um, you know, we all want face to face interactions. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the ideal. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a very big party uh, somewhere next year <laughs> yes. when everything's over. Thank you so much, Ellen, for your time. And uh, yeah, it's nice chatting. Yes, say hi to Mark and uh, uh, have a nice day. And, uh, and a good weekend already or later. Cool. And then everybody's welcome to look up the Atlas website or send email to me if they want to find any particular project or papers. Um, yeah. I will. Maybe they will apply for internships or what have you later on at some point. So uh, yes. I will that point will you cool. to, uh, to you. Okay. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye. Bye-bye, Ellen. Bye.